آمین نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Uh, to all the dear sisters, I hope that uh, you're all doing fine, inshallah. Um, you know, thank you for joining again once uh, once again, like uh, day 17th of Surah Mulk. And uh, yes, inshallah, we'll be doing ayah number 19 and 20 of Al-Mulk, inshallah. Yes, uh, like today's ayah is a bit lengthy, are a bit lengthy. So we'll inshallah just cover the one rule or right for today. So yes, we were doing the rules of non sakin and tanween, and we did the second rule yesterday as well, which is named as etgham, and which means to enter or to merge. We also learned that the first rule and the second rule they both have to do with the six letters. The first rule rule was you know related to the six letters of throat. The second rule of etgham, uh, you know, for this you will have to you know rem remember again the six letters which are your maloon letters, right? So I said whenever these letters come after noon sakin or tanween, we simply you know assimilate or blend the sound of the letter uh, which comes before and after noon sakin or you know the tanween, and you know we kind of skip the sound of noon from between them, right? And we say mir rabbi kum rather than min rabbi kum. So you know this rule has uh, like is an uh, there is an extension to this rule because it has like two types. Elgham has two types, right? So uh, because you know this rule um, is related to the, these six letters. For the two types, we divide these six letters into like four and two, right? So the two letters uh, are you know uh, lam and ra. This uh, uh, and the rule which involves these two is named as idgham. Without gunna, right? Idam with uh, idgham without gunna, and the rule which has like the other four letters, which is which is ya ya wa mim nun human letters. This is named as then uh, idgham with gunna, right? I have written that what gunna means as well. Gunna means that making a nasal sound, and you know without gunna, which means that there will no there will be a no nasal sound. So let's see the examples, okay? The assimilation is in the rule because the name suggests that we will do assim, you know, we will assimilate the sounds of the letter that comes before or after noon sakin or tanween, right? So we will assimilate, we will enter the sounds of the one letter into another, but for these two letters, we will not do gunna along with that assimilation. But for these four rules, we will also, you know, uh, do gunna. In this example, you see mir rob bikum. There is a noon sakin, and after noon sakin, there is a letter ro, a ro, which is from these two letters of lam and ro. So what we will do, we will assimilate the sound of this meme letter into the ro letter and say, mir ro bikum. And you know, the sound of like noon sakin, just, it just skips. And we say, mir ro, mir ro bikum, right? But you know, in this rule, we say um, after like noon sakin, there is letter ya here, which is from these four letters, ya wa mim noon of, you know, ya maloon letters. So what we do, uh, the same way, we also assimilate the so sound of mim letter into the ya letter and we say my, and we skip the noon. My ya qulu. But you know, you see the difference is that for the first one, we just said mir rabbikum. That was a bit quick. This, when we enter the sound of meme letter into ra, we quickly say mir rabbikum, and we are not staying at letter ra here. I'm saying mir rabbikum, right? But in this rule, when I am, you know, uh, entering the sound of meme into ya, I am also staying for, you know, at the letter ya for a bit and making a nasal sound. I say may yaqulu. I'm not saying may yaqulu. Not quick, not fast, okay? But I'm giving you a proper time to the ya letter here and making a nasal sound as well. May yaqulu. Right? So I have written, you know, the point here at the side as well that for this, you know, when we say there is idgham without the ghunna, without any nasal sound, what happens that, you know, we skip the letter uh, like noon sakin from here, but the nasal 
like uh, like both the nasal and the sound a sound of noon letter skips from here and we just say mirra as if noon was not there at all right mirra but what happens is in this is that we skip the sound of noon letter when we say maya you do not hear the n here right we say maya but the nasal of the noon letter the quality like the noon letter has this nasal in it right so the nasal stays in this one and we say my the, uh, the like the, the sound from the nose when we say my yaqulu right so yes these are the two types of idgham the first one is called idgham with gunna and the second one is idgham without gunna gunna simply means nasal sound right so you, you you will have to you know yesterday we remembered these six letters but now what we, what you can do is that you can remember these two types as well with uh, dividing the letters from this which are like four letters here ya waw mim noon which you can remember from this abbreviation of yumin ya waw mim noon and the other two are lam and raw letters without gunna and yes i hope that you get this second rule of noon sakin uh, and then Wien as well. Inshallah, we'll do the third and fourth one, inshallah, tomorrow. Moving to our ayahs for today. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Awalam yaraw ila طير فوقهم صافات ويقبضن ويقبضن ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أم من هذا الذي هو جود لكم ينصركم جود لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور Okay, so our ayahs for today are a bit lengthy. And inshallah, we'll try to cover these two. The ayah number 19 starts with letter Hamza, which makes the sound of A here because of Fatha. Awalam. Very easy at the start. Awalam. Wow letter, shaping your lips round. Walam. Lam letter, tip of the tongue. It touches the back of our upper teeth, or you can say heart palate, and we say La. Awalam. Lam, I'm joining the sound of lam letter with meme sakin here because of the sakin on meme, right? Lam. Awa lam ya raw. Ya raw. Ya letter is articulated when the middle portion of our tongue it is raised toward the palate and we say ya. Ya. Ya raw. Raw. This raw letter. It's going to be heavy here. Why? Because it has a fatha on it. So we say ra, ra. I'm not saying raw, raw. Rather, ra. My mouth is full. And how that is full? I raise the back part of my tongue to do that and say ya ra. Awalam ya ra ila tayri. Ila tayri. Okay. So. Again, Hamza letter with the kasra, ilay, ilay. Okay, we're going to join that with here. So, let's, lam letter with the fatha on it, la, ila. I'm joining the lam letter sound with pa letter here, pa. Why? Because pa letter has this W kind of symbol on that, which means that I'm supposed to join the sound of this letter with the previous letter and say, la, pa, lam letter and Pa letter. La pa. Also, you will have to remember that here, lam letter is, you know, uh, is not, you know, heavy. The lam letter is not sounding heavy, but the pa letter is a heavy one. So we will make a transition like la pa, la and pa. E la pa iri. Okay, I've also written this here that the pa sound is kind of like this. 
ta, not ta. This is not the light sound of ta. This is ta. Ila ta iri. Again, I'm joining the sound of ta letter with the ya letter next one because this has a sakin on it. I'm saying ta iri. Okay, ra letter again with a kasra and you know we are supposed to make it light here. I'm just saying ri, the simple sound ri. I'm not making my mouth full, rather my mouth feels empty and which means that the back part of my tongue is not raised to say a ri. Ila poiri fauqahum fauqahum Okay, fa letter, tip of the upper teeth, it touches the lower lips and air is removed as a result and we say fa. Fauqa, fauqa. I'm again, you know, uh, joining this with wow letter because of sakin and saying fau, fa and wa, fau qa. Okay, this, so the next letter is qaf letter. The heavy qaf for that the back part of the tongue it touches the soft palate but with strength, right? Qa, fau qa. Okay, fau qa hum. Right, so, you know, some people they they articulate the sound of this heavy cough letter, but that is not very clear because you know they are not touching the back part of the tongue with strength. Okay, so we are supposed to touch it with strength, and we say qa. That is when the proper you know clear voice of the cough heavy letter will come out, and we say fa qa qa hum. Okay, the next letter is ha letter. Which is which comes from the portion of the throat that is near to our chest, right? And we say who, who, or who, and again we're joining with the meme letter here because meme letter has a sakin on it, and we say whom, fau a whom, fa fatin. This next letter is sod letter. The sod letter, this letter here, right? The heavy sod, and you know this this sound is like fa, fa. I'm not saying sa. I'm saying fa, fa. And I'm you know for this letter, I'm also raising the back part of my tongue, and my mouth feels full. And when I say fa, as if you know the air is beneath the cheeks. Uh, we like trapped beneath the cheeks and I say spa. Also, this sword letter has a mud on it, mud symbol. You know, you see this symbol? Mud symbol on it. Mud, mud means we stretch here, right? And, uh, you know, th there is a like different mud here for today. Uh, and the earlier muds we did were, they, they were related to the Hamza that comes after it. But, you know, in this word, you see that after mud, there isn't any Hamza you see, right? So, in this word, we will look at the uh, the tashdid symbol that comes after it right so th there is a mud and whenever after a mud on the next letter there is a tashdid symbol so then we stretch that mud for six counts okay and that is why i'm saying so fatin right i'm stretching this mud for six count you can count th that on your fingers like one two three four five six when you are stretching this Right, because the next letter has a tashdeed, this like small w kind of symbol, and that is why I'm re I'm stretching this for six counts. Okay, <clears throat> so also I'm I, I will keep that mud heavy as well when I say so. I'm not saying sa. Right, my mouth is full when I'm raising the sound and saying so. Fatin. The next letter is simple letter fa here, just like fau here. And we raise the sound for two counts again because of this, you know, uh, this uh, like straight slanting line above the letter of fa, which is like equivalent to the alif madda that we do, right? For two counts. And we say fa tin, fa tin. Okay, ta letter here, like the, the, the light letter. And, uh, you know, different from this, Ta heavy one. So this is simple letter, tip of the tongue when it touches the back of our upper teeth, and we say thin, thin, right? Also, you know, there is a rule here, and uh, because you know this ta letter has a tenween of kasratain on it, so let's see the next letter. 
the next letter after this tanween is wow here. So whenever afternoon sakin or tanween comes any letter from the six yarm loon letters we did today as well, right? Ya ro mim la wow noon then what we do is that we assimilate the sound of you know this tanween into wow and uh, we will also do gunna here this is the type of the dram with the gunna i will not only assimilate the sound but i will also stay for a bit and make a nasal sound on letter wow and say right i'm staying on the letter wow here and making a nasal sound I'm not simply saying tiwa, not quickly, okay? So fa tiwa, okay. Wa ya okay. So the next letter is ya letter. Middle portion of the tongue is raised towards the palate, and we say ya, ya. Joining the sound of this ya letter with the next letter of qaf because qaf has a sakin on it, and I say ya Qaf is a heavy letter, right? And also this is from the five letters of Qalqala. These are the five letters which when they like when they come with the sakin on them, their sound bounces back or, you know, there is an echo or you can say the, the sound repeats at the articulation point when we say Yaqa, Yaqa, Wa Yaqa Biyadna. Okay, so the ba letter simply joining the tulips and saying B, B. The next letter is the heaviest letter, which is BAD. This letter here, right? BAD. You know, for this letter, it is your choice. Either you touch the sides of the back part of the tongue, like the both sides, or you take only the one side of the back part of your tongue. And what you do, you touch that with the upper molar wisdom teeth. And you say a ba. Okay, here a is has a sakin on it, so we'll join this sound with the previous letter of ba and say bil bil the b sound with ba sound bil because I'm you know making my mouth full when I say ba here bil why because this is the heavy letter and my back part of the tongue is raised for that okay and also. You know, I'm not saying right? The sound of this bad letter will not bounce back because this is not from these five letters of Kalkala. So we will avoid saying right? We will say rather as if, you know, our mouth has like engulfed the sound of the bad letter, you know, and it just disperses in our mouth. And we just say and, you know, nothing comes out of your mouth after that. We just say biob, yaq biob. Okay, yaq biob. Okay, at the end, you know, there is a noon letter as well. So we will, you know, have to articulate the sound of this letter as well, even though we are making it, you know, suck in here because you, we we t took a pause here in the ayah. So for a pause, we change the sound of the. Uh, fatha of the last letter into a sakin. So the new letter, although it is sakin at the end, but there will be still sound. When we say biobn, at the end you can hear like very small sound of the letter noon, but it is there. I'm not totally skipping that and saying yaq biob. At the end, I'm trying to say biobn. Yaq biobn. I hope you understood this, okay? Wa yaq biobn. Ma yumsikuhunna. Okay, I, I, I forgot to mark here two points at the ma here because there is ma, uh, like alif madha happening here for two counts. When we say ma, meme letter and you know alif madha, ma yumsikuhunna. Ya letter simply with the dhamma and joining it with the meme sound. Yumsi, yumsi. Thin letter here. The light letter C with air and whistle sound, and we say C kuhunna. Calf letter, the light calf letter, back part, back part of the tongue. It uh, touches both the hard as well as soft palate, and we say ku kuhunna. Again, ha letter from the portion of the throat that is near to our chest, and we say hunna. There is a noon with a tashtid here, 
So we will make gunna on this letter. And you know, whenever there is a noon tashdeed or meem tashdeed, we do gunna, which means that we stay on the sound of the, uh, this like noon letter here or meem letter and make a nasal sound. And we say hunna, ma yumsiku hunna, illa rahmanu illa rahmanu Okay, so Hamza letter, and I'm joining this Hamza with the next Lam letter. Why? Because the Lam letter has a tashtid on it, right? So I'm saying illa, illa. Right? So first we'll join the Al Hamza letter with the Lam letter and say illa. And then, you know, the next letter of Ra again has a tashtid on it. So again, we will join the sound of Ra letter with the previous letter of Lam. First we join Hamza with Lam. Then we join Lam with Ra here and say La Ra. Illa Ra. Right? So I've written it here in the simplified form. Illa Rahmanu. Ra here will be heavy. Our mouth will be full when we say Ra. This is not a Ra. Rather, a Ra. Why? Because Ra has a Fatha on it here and we say Rahmanu. Ha letter next from the portion of the throat, which is the middle one, right? With a lot more air in this. And we say Rah Rahmanu, right? Rahmanu. Okay, so next meme letter with a, a straight standing line on it. Uh, and we stretch this for two counts and say Ma Manu, right? Manu. Innahu. Again here, you see a noon with the tashtid. So whenever there is noon tashtid or mean tashtid, we make a nasal sound and stay for a bit and say innahu. Ha letter here, this is the same ha as here or as here. And uh, this ha has an inverted dhamma symbol, uh, symbol on it, right? This inverted dhamma symbol, not the simple one. So we will stretch this again for two counts and say who in who be kulli shay in basir be kulli simple word here right be kulli shay in she letter here for this the air spreads in our mouth and our teeth come closer to say shay in okay so this Hamza letter here has it in Wien, you know, of Kasratain here. So uh, let's see the next letter. After this Tanween, we see a letter Ba. So this is a rule of Noon Sakin and Tanween, which says that whenever after Noon Sakin or Tanween comes letter Ba, we change the sound of this letter Ba into meme. And that is why you see a small meme written here that we are supposed to change the sound of, you know, this uh, Noon Sakin hidden in this Tanween and say, Ba. I'm not saying in, rather I'm saying ba letter and then after sod letter, the heavy sod, right? Just the way we did in so fatty. So we say ba this sound here, sui and not si. I'm stretching the sound of sui here to, for two counts again because of ya madda here. And at the end, raw letter will be heavy and I say sui Why? Because ra has tanween of tamma on it. Next ayah starting with amman, hamza letter and joining that with the next letter of meme because of tashtid and saying amman. I'm making a nasal sound on meme letter and staying for a bit because there is a meme tashtid. Amman. Hadalavi. Ha letter. I'm stretching the sound for two counts because of this standing straight line on it. Hada. Hada. The letter next, tip of the tongue. It touches the tip of our upper teeth. And, you know, the soft sound of the comes. The. The. The lazy again, this soft the the letter. Ha the lazy. Ha the lazy. I'm stretching the sound of the here for two counts again because of yamada. 
This ya madha ya sakin. Before that, kasra on the previous letter. Huwa. Simple here. Ha and wow letter. Huwa. Huwa judullakum. Jim letter here. Ju. Judullakum. So you see a noon sakin here. Let's see the next letter, which is dal here. So the rule says that this is ikhfa here, right? Ikhfa means hiding the sound of noon sakin. Noon letter here, because the next letter is from the 15 letters uh, uh, on which we uh, do ikhfa. And we hide the sound and say jundun. Jun. I'm not saying jundun. I'm saying jundulakum. Okay, so again you see the second rule here is Tanween and after the Tanween of Pamma Tain you see a letter Ram, Lam, sorry, letter Lam, where the rule says whenever afternoon Sakin or Tanween there comes any letter from the six year Maloon letters, we do Idgham, which means I'm assimilating the sound and saying Dulla, Dulla Kum, Hua Dulla Kum. Ya furukum. Ya letter, middle portion of the tongue is raised towards the palate. Ya, ya. Again, you see a noon sack in here. The next letter after is, is saw the letter, right? So again, I'm doing ikhfa here. Ikhfa means hiding. Hiding because if this saw the letter after noon sack in and saying, ya fu, I'm not saying, yan su. I'm hiding this noon sound and saying yasurukum. Also, I'm keeping the sound of saw the letter heavy, right? This is a heavy letter. I'm saying fu. I'm not saying su. My mouth is heavy when I say su. Yasurukum. Ra will be heavy as well because of pum on it. Ru. Rukum. Okay, so there's another rule here. You see a meme sack in here, and after that, you see again meme letter. This is a rule of meme sack in, which is called idgham, that I will, you know, make these two memes sound like one and do, uh, you know, gunna here, which is making nasal sound. I'm saying kum min, kum, making these one, and saying kum min, right? So, uh, uh, another rule after that, which is like you see a noon sack in here in min. After the noon sack in, you see a letter dal. So this is the same rule as here. Ikhfa rule in ya or in ju. We will do the same here and say miu duni. Miu ikhfa means hiding the sound of noon here. Miu duni. Right? Duni. This is the letter here, the light letter, tip of the tongue, touches the back of our upper teeth. And we say, do, ni, do, do. I'm stretching this for two counts again because of this wow madha here, which is wow sakin. And before that, there is a dhamma on the previous letter. And we say, do, ni. I'm not saying, do, ni. Right? I'm stretching. I'm saying, do, ni. Do, ni, rahmani. Near raw ni and raw near raw. I'm joining the noon with raw because of tashtid, and also I'm keeping raw letter heavy because raw has a tashtid and a fatha on it. Do near raw ni and raw. Do near rahmani. Okay, so there is a high letter again from the middle portion of the throat with a lot more air. And less of a voice of ha letter, and we say roh ni roh mani. I'm stretching the ma here for two counts because of, because of this stranding straight line on mani. Do ni roh mani. Ini kafiruna. Ini hamza and noon letter joining noon letter with lam here because of. Sakin on letter lam inil kafiruna kafi kaf letter the light kaf right kafi kafi stretching because of standing straight line here kafiruna runa 
I'm keeping the raw letter, you know, heavy here because of dhamma on it. And I'm also stretching for two counts and saying ru na. Ru because of waw mada here. Ka fi ru na. Illa. La sound for two counts again because of alif madda. Illa. Illa fi gurur. Fa letter, tip of the upper teeth. It touches the lower lips and air is removed. And we say fi. Fi. For two counts here, the E sound in it because of ya madda. Fi gurur. Okay, this is another like a new letter here. Gain letter. Gain. You see here as well. This, uh, this comes from the portion of the throat that is the upper one. And this has this gargle sound in this. And also this is a heavy letter. And we say gu. The next la raw letter will be heavy because of dhamma on it. But the, like the raw letter at the end will be light because of the tenween of kasratain. غرور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشهر لي صدر لي مجسد لي أمري رحل الأقبة من لسان يفهم قبلي ربنا زدنا أيما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم حاصدنا أسابا نسيرا أمين سلمان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and uh, welcome to you once again, dear sisters, and hope that you are in the best state of health and iman. And with the laws of afiyat and protection for you, we'll start our lesson today. And uh, we have done almost uh, the two-thirds of our mulk today. And you have seen right from the beginning that this surah al mulk which means the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the empire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which includes the complete universe. So we are reading about it. And we have seen so many amazing signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verses of Quran, ayat, or the ayat in the universe. The word ayat has two connotations. A sentence, a verse in Quran is called an ayat. And then there are ayat in the universe as well. So through these verses, we have seen at so, looked at so many ayat, so many signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, in this surah, you saw that Allah mentions the creation of life and death. And Allah subhanahu wa tells us the purpose of creating life and death as well. To see that who performs ahsana, amala, who performs the best of the deeds. And that is the purpose of our life as well. Then another amazing sign that Allah subhanahu wa draws our attention towards is the creation of the seven heavens. And then Allah invites the human beings to find some force with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa and then Allah himself says that even uh, how hard you try, you can't find any fault with the plan, with the design, with the making of this universe because it is perfect in every aspect. Then the beauty of night sky is mentioned here, which is again a sign of Allah's uh, creation and which should be you know, reflected upon. And which should make one think that there is a creator behind this sign as well. And the beautiful sky has a dual purpose. The stars, especially on the night sky, have a dual purpose to serve. Not only they make the sky beautiful, but they are a source to drive away the devils when they, they try to get closer to the heavens and have a sneak peek there. And then, you know, by today we have reached another sign. This one, which is about birds. And the verse starts with Avalam Yero, Ila Tairi, Hokaham, Sa, Fatim, Vayak, Biz. A is a question word, V connective means, and Dam is used to make a sentence negative. Avalam Yero, Yero is from Ra, Hamsa, and Ya, the root word. Avalam yero, have they not seen? Although the translation is done in past tense, 
but for convenience sake, I'm translating it into present because the phenomena, phenomena is such an eternal one that the fact as it was true in the past, it is true today and it will remain a truth in the future as well. So Allah says that have they not seen what? Ila tayri. Ila is a preposition which means towards and tayri. Tayri is from toya and ra which means birds. Allah says that have they, the people who don't believe in Allah as the Lord, as the creator of the universe, have they not seen towards the birds, faukahu, over their heads, above them, south pathen. Faukahu is from the root fa and ka, and fauk means overhead, above them, south pathen. South pathen is from sa, fa, and fa. The this letter is repeated in the root. And as ones who are in rows spread out, means spreading out their wings. And you have noticed that birds, uh, sometimes they fly in a straight line. And that straight line is called saf in Arabic. And it is, you know, one of the keywords of this verse. And uh, the concept of saf in namaz is also the similar thing and we'll look into the meaning of this word later on is from the root letters of ba and what so safat is the plural of safa which is singular feminine form of the noun and it, Safat is the plural. Ones who are in rows. Vayakabism. And they. Means they is for them as female. Fold in their wings. They contract. Yakabiz means to fasten something. To close it. And the closing of the wings. The folding of the wings is mentioned here. But the word of about what has many different connotations and meanings as well. Ma yumsikuhuna, not yumsikuhuna, he holds or he upholds or he sustains them or suspends them, meaning that he keeps them flying in the air and he does not let them fall down. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is controlling them and the birds in their flight remain unaffected by the gravitational pull and they don't fall down on the ground. No one is, you know, sustaining them. Keeping them fly in the air, illa Rahman, but only the Rahman, the most merciful. Illa is accept. Inna hu, indeed he, who is a pronoun for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna hu, he indeed, be is a preposition meaning with, fully, all or everything. He is with everything, shay means thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with everything, basir, seer, he is watching, he is, you know, looking over, he is guarding over everything. So this is the word for word meaning of verse 19. Now we move on to the verse 20. A uh, again is a question word. Man who is a preposition and connective. Haza or he is this one. Allazi. Allazi again is that same Allazi. Who huwa jundun lakum. Who has junud. Jund is single and Junood word is also used in Quran, which means the armies, which means, uh, uh, you know, uh, the huge or large groups of people. And the best meaning actually is army. So basically, if when you will look at the metaphoric meaning of the verse, it will make more sense to you. Lakum for you, yan surukum. Yan surukum basically is from noon swad and ra, which means to help one someone. Yan surukum, he helps you. So all these pronouns basically are hidden in this one single word. And when you translate this word into any English word or any Urdu word or any other language, 
you'll have to have a complete, you know, a phrase required to translate it. But it is just one word in Arabic. Min duni Rahman. Min means from again. It's a preposition. Duni Rahman besides Rahman. Rahman word is repeated, meaning the most merciful, the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming again. Inil kafiruna. And in fact, al kafiruna, those who disbelieve, those who um, show disbelief in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, except, fi, are not, but in. Ghurur. Ghurur means delusion, deception. They are in delusion. Means they are just deceiving themselves by denying one of the basic facts, reality of this universe, which is the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone denies this basic fact, it means that they are deluding, they are deceiving themselves, none other. Now, I would start the metaphoric meaning. Do they not observe the birds above them spreading their wings and folding them? Means when in flight, the birds have to open and they have to fold their wings. None uphold them except the compassionate Allah. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is holding them in the air like that. Surely, it is he who watches over all things. He is the seer, means he is watching over all things. And Amman has Allazi. Is there anyone who has the junood or the one that has the force to help you? Jundun lakum, anyone who has the forces, the armies to help you, Mindurni Rahman, leaving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that has the force to help you beside the compassionate means that besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no one with a force, with an army that he can help you whenever you are in trouble. Inil kafiruna illa fi And in fact, as a matter of fact, the people who don't believe, unbelievers, are suffering from delusion. And this delusion is affecting none else but themselves only. We look at the keywords. The one keyword is Yerau, but I would leave it purposely because it has Hamza and Ya in its root letters, which are a bit complicated, especially at this stage, and they involve a bit of grammar that I try at most to uh, avoid. Tair, as, as I have told you, means the birds, Falkaho means overhead flying in the air, Safat. Safat actually is the main uh, word that I would start from. Allah says that the birds are flying, the or the birds do fly in the formation of Saf, Saf, which is a straight line or a row. Basically, Saf is a conformity in Salah. Salah is never accepted or it's never complete if, you know, the, the people offering Salah are in the perfect Saf form. Their formation is that of a row and rows are perfect. Prophet Muhammad he used to instruct the believers very strictly about straightening of the Saf or rows and he told us that this is the part of Salah. And we have to make sure that the sub while praying is straight. And basically, it is to join shoulder with shoulder. And the feet of those standing in the row should also be in a straight line. Symbolically, sub means unity and discipline. Not only in physical form, but in ideological sense as well. There should be unity and discipline. So this physical expression of self formation basically points towards the unity of ideology amongst the Muslims. So, but unfortunately, we see that this thing, this discipline, the formation of self, which basically is a virtue in Islam, and it uh, you know is meant to make ourselves disciplined people. But unfortunately we won't see any discipline amongst the Muslims these days. 
you know the christian churches are more orderly kept in and the people attending those churches are more disciplined and in order than we the muslims attending our mosques so it is something that we have to reflect upon and it, it, although it's a religious duty you know making or forming a saf is a religious religious duty for us muslims but it looks as if the non muslims are following this duty uh, more you know uh, more in a careful way or uh, more in a, a appealing way rather than we the muslims even if you visit the haram at Me mecca or medina you would see uh, that disorder and you would see that lack of discipline and uh, it is actually everywhere in the islamic world whereas prophet muhammad peace be upon him has stressed on making the rose spread and making the rose spread in the real life is also something that shows that we are disciplined people but unfortunately as i hinted towards that it's not shown anywhere in our lives and we need to learn this. We need to learn this from birds because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here may, referring the word saf in regards with the birds that they fly in the air in form of a saf, in form of a row or a straight line. And he says that Allah himself is the one who does not let them fall down and he sustains them and supports them. They fold their wings and they spread the wings out. He is holding them. He is sustaining them, supporting them in the air. It is no one else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is surprising that they don't fall. Sometimes they're not moving their feathers, wings, and they don't fall on the ground. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed the wings of the birds in such a way that they help them keep flying and don't fall. Inna hu bikulli shayn basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basir. Basir is the one who is all seer, who can see everything. And who even can see the needs of the creature as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made birds to fly in the air. So for that reason, he gave them wings and he fashioned the wings in such a way that they help the bird stay in the air and the wings support or balance the body of the bird in such a way that it doesn't fall down. Because Allah knew that this design is best for the bird. Allah made fish to swim in water. And Allah equipped it with fins because fins are needed for swimming in the water. So Allah is Al-Basir. He not only guards, he is watching over, but he is aware of the needs of the creature as well. And he fashions his creature according to the needs that it, it has to fulfill. And Allah equips the creature in such a way that it can easily make for itself, you know, whatever it needs. Amman has a lazi. It's a question statement actually here. Means, is there anyone or is there someone besides Allah? Min duni Rahman. Amman has a lazi min duni Rahman. Is there anyone besides Rahman, besides the most compassionate, who can help Yan Surukum, who can help you with his Jundun, with his armies, with his force? Means whenever we the human beings are caught up in some trouble, in some problem, these are the armies, this is the force of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sends for to help us to you know, bring us out of that situation. And no one has such armies and such force as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does have. And this is an everyday experience of our lives that many a times we are caught up in difficult circumstances, situations, 
and we humble down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We supplicate to him and he makes such arrangements to bring us out of that situation that we even can't imagine. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how he sends his armies to help us. And after having observed all these phenomena all around us, there are still people who are bent upon doing kufr and they are al-kafirun. Allah says, in il-kafiruna illa fi gurur, the unbelievers are suffering from delusion. They are denying all the basic realities, facts of human life and living and this universe and the existence of Allah subhanahu wa So by denying these things, by establishing that these things don't occur or they don't have a creator at all, they are deceiving none other but themselves alone. So there is a great lesson that these signs, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are spreading everywhere. Some are able to pay heed to those signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get their lesson from. But some others are blinded towards those very clear signs of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says that they are not doing harm to anyone but to themselves. And when these people don't reform themselves and in their, you know, uh, hatred and in their opposition towards their Lord and the Creator, when they cross every limit, then they are punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have seen a glimpse of the punishment in the same surah already. So there is a great warning and a great invitation that we have to reflect upon the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we keep on denying them, then we are inviting the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everyone should fear and everyone should try to avoid. So this, this is the brief explanation of these verses today. And with this, I will go back to Ambreen. Okay, Ambreen, it's over to you once again. Sakala, ma'am.